one of those plants that does one thing very specifically. So kind of the gold standard is a plant that does many things um, and does them in small doses. This plant is a small dosage plant, meaning you can carry a very small amount of it, but it does one thing really well, and that's what I'm going to use it for. <clears throat> the plant is anemone. These are not the sea anemones, those are animals. Uh, but the word anemone means wind, and I'm not sure. So the common name for anemones, so they're not sea anemones, but the plants called anemones. One of the most common names for the anemones is pulsatilla or pulsatilla. Uh, it's sometimes used in other forms of medicine, but I'm going to be talking about a whole plant or a tincture of anemone. So there are many species of anemone, um, and I'm not sure how they all work. Uh, Juliet Blankenspor of the Chestnut School, uh, she uses mostly anemone quincifolia, and she has really good results with that. Uh, the ones that I've used tend to be the Rocky Mountain and Southwestern anemones, and those species are anemone patens, anemone tuberosa, anemone occidentalis, that's a western anemone, and anemone pult, uh, excuse me, multifida. So I use a couple of species, uh, patens, tuberosa, occidentalis, and multifida, but other people are using, there's about 25 species of anemone in the United States, um, and I'd like to know how each one works personally and try using them over time. The parts that are strongest in anemone are the underground structures. Uh, in the southwestern species, they're often tubers, little round underground structures, uh, but some people, and I as well, also use the above ground portions. So with anemone, I often just tincture the whole plant. It's a medicine that I consider uh, only works uh, if it's fresh. So if you're going to make anemone tincture, when you gather your anemone plants, make sure you have the medicines on hand or nearby to make the tincture that day or the next day. Dried, it is not as strong. The plant, by the way, is very caustic. If you actually eat small pieces of it, you'll have an acrid burning sensation. The same as if you ate small pieces of its very close cousin, Clematis. Anemone is in the buttercup family, like black cohosh and golden seal, and the ranunculaceae. And once again, the ranunculaceae are good, uh, some of them are really good medicine plants, but many of them, none of them really, are good foods. So you don't really want to mess around eating anything in the buttercup family. Also things like columbine are in this family. So anemone is uh, ranunculaceae. There is a number of species and the species, I've mentioned the species that I use uh, more often than the others, which tend to grow in the Rocky Mountains and the Southwest. I tincture the plant fresh in a high percentage of alcohol and I use it for this one specific thing which is it helps stop panic attacks. So anxiety attacks or panic attacks better than any other plant. It, it's phenomenal. Pretty much any herbalist that's ever used it, most of us kind of are addicted to it in the sense of nothing else works. And we're, I'm just noticing recently on some of the chat groups, uh, some of the herbal chat groups, our people are looking for it because it's not easy to find. Even when it's abundant, they're often pretty small plants that, and they're pretty and native and most of us don't want to deplete them at all from their native uh, habitats. That said, it's just, if you can find it and there's enough of it, gather some for your own medicine. If you can share it with other people, that'd be helpful. And it is used for panic attacks. So the question really is, what is a panic attack? We can start there. And a panic attack is a nervous system or a mental health or anxiety disorder that freezes people up. They start to really fear everything following the moment they have the panic attack. Often, if you've ever had stage fright or scared about giving a presentation and you just can't get in front of people, that is very similar. That is, in its own sense, a panic attack. But m people who have chronic panic attacks have them all the time or frequently. Just everybody's individual here. And it will just stop them from doing things because they'll go to they'll get into their car to drive someplace and all of a sudden they're frozen with fear and they just feel like they could die. And they literally die like they just, the next step could be the worst step. And so it's just this overriding morbid fear, uh, very enveloping, which is common in, in panic attacks and they're also called anxiety attacks. But most people have had smaller episodes of these where you're just like, you don't want to answer the phone or you just don't want to talk to somebody or avoid this situation. Those are all 
somewhat panic attacks. But what I'm talking about is when you elevate that, and so it really inhibits you from doing anything, you know, at least for the moment. Uh, those, those are the kind I'm talking about. Who knows how anemone works? But small amounts of anemone for some people will just will stop it within a minute or two. It's pretty amazing and very useful. And so for that reason, because I've talked a lot about how stress is often a factor. So this is not good for people who are angry or uncentered. This is really much more for specifically that situation I'm calling a panic attack. Uh, small amounts work really well. So that's the beauty of anemone. One ounce bottle, even a large gathering over a long period of time with a lot of panicky people will last me. Start with one drop first after you ask those questions. Any problem with alcohol? Um, what medicines might help you here? You start with one drop of anemone. And for some people, one drop will work. For some people, it will drop down their panic and fear enough and fear enough in order where they can start to you know, feel more normal or feel more comfortable in their skin. So I, I'm a huge fan of anemone. Uh, if you take a lot, it's a bit caustic. I don't really know if there's a toxic limit. You know, it's a caustic plant. I've, uh, me and other people have experimented taking large amounts to see what would happen. It's not clear, but I'll say this about anemone. That what the smallest dose possible is all you need. So if three to five drops, so drops are click, 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 click out of your dropper, right? A couple of drops are usually all you need, and then more doesn't do anything more. Usually a few drops, if it works, right, because it doesn't work for all the people and it doesn't work for everybody all the time, obviously. If a few drops stop it, then giving a lot more doesn't do much more, so just save your anemone and wait until the panic attack reasserts itself, and then once again go back to drop dosages. So it's very specific, anemone for panic attacks. There's a few other situations where anemone can be really helpful, but for this course right now, I just want to say to use it for panic attacks. And I also want to say that it's one of my least favorite herbs for me to take internally. When I take anemone internally, I lose my sense of humor. It's pretty astounding. Every, time, every couple of years I try it again thinking, that's just impossible. How does a plant, but I guess whatever, whatever kind of mental function that it works in, the same way that it reduces panic attacks, for me, it just makes the world a little, little flatter. So I mean, I guess it could be good, but uh, rarely is it useful. So I guess if you found somebody's sense of humor too much and you wanted to flatten it, you can consider anemone in that. Um, I also have given people really large amounts that were off their antipsychotic drugs, and I've never seen it helpful there. So sometimes doing first aid, one of the problems is people stop taking whatever drugs, lithium, antipsychotic drugs. I don't know actually what they're taking sometimes because they often won't say it. And I've tried giving anemone if they're willing, and pretty much no results for that kind of hypermania that's accompanied. So that's it. Anemone is the genus of the plant. It's also called pulsatilla or windflower. They're uh, common in a couple of places in the United States. Make yourself some medicine. You don't need a lot. A pint of medicine will last you a long amount of time. Plus, you can share it with others. And one, um, one other thing about uh, anemone is that panic attacks often come in clusters. So what happens with anemone is if people who know they have panic attacks and worry about them, which is reasonable, right? So if you worry about them, but if you start to carry the anemone and take it at the first sign, often it will help stop further clustering of the panic attacks because there's this whole mechanism like you worry about things and then you worry about them more. It's like a feed forward mechanism, right? And so it kind of disrupts this feed forward or positive loop mechanism because you're worried about getting worse and worse and worse. And if you stop it, then it helps reduce it uh, even later on. Uh, just so you know, anemones are often gorgeous plants. We'll have some photos for you to look at, but it, it, most of them are just very pretty and some of them are stunning and often grow as garden ornamentals. Uh, another common name, by the way, is pasque flower, Easter flower, because they come up early in the season. So in California, for instance, by March, uh, one of the anemones, I think it's anemone pulsatia, uh, comes up earlier. And so it also has the name pasque, which means Easter flower. And I think that's, that will do it for this plant. Uh, when you use it, the effects are usually not very subtle. Usually it's pretty obvious that it's helping. And I'm just really hoping people uh, get some anemone and carry it with them, even if you don't have panic attacks, to help other people that do. Mm -hmm.